Hello and welcome to another edition of Physics 264 Pre-Lab Tutorials. I'm Dr. Steve Brule. Today we're going to do Lab 10, Pick Microcontrollers. Let's get right into it. How do we breadboard the pick circuit? Um, well, we're not going to really go into that much. It's a very simple circuit. All you have is just a few uh, components here. I will mention that you don't need this reset switch. We could throw the reset switch in there and that would perform the same function as just removing the power from the chip. So we don't really need that. And uh, we don't need this smoothing capacitor right here. Um, I'll also mention, so we, we've got three different color um, LEDs right here. You don't have to put them in this order. You can put them on whatever pin you want. Okay. But they all go on to a different pin, of course. And the only question is, is which direction is your LED facing? And the way you can tell that is that there's a small little flat area on the uh, side of the diode that has the line. So that's how you can tell which side goes to ground. It's a little tricky. to You can't hardly see it, but you can feel it if you've got really uh, sensitive fingertips. Okay, well, uh, let's... Uh, learn about setting up our programming environment in the program called MPLAB which allows us to program this microcontroller. The first step is to um, find the MPLAB icon on your computer, double click it so you open the program before you open the file. Then go into project, click open, then navigate to the thumb drive that we gave you and um, if you're in section one, use folder one. If you're in section two, use folder two. And then you'll see a, f a file in there all ready for you to use that was prepared to you by none other than Buzz. Um, open up the, uh, so once you've opened that up, then find this little window right here. Double click on the traffic, which is the actual program Buzz wrote. And then um, it'll open this window. And then you can see the programming steps that Buzz has included for you to get everything rolling. So he's done a lot of this, the preliminary work for us. And all we have to do is program it to act like a uh, stoplight. Okay, we need to tell the uh, this MP Lab program that we're using this particular microcontroller. It turns out there's exactly 1,327,222 different types of microcontrollers and this program just uses uh, you can select a few hundred of these maybe it's got a thousand of that this number I'm just making that up there's a lot of different microcontrollers and they uh, all have slightly different functions maybe not even slightly different they have different size memories but this is the one that we've got for our lab okay and we have to set select that device in our MP lab program step two six open up the special functions so go into view special functions and then you'll see this window appear and that window is tailored to the particular microcontroller that we're using and it shows every one of the registers in that microcontroller and then um, what we can do is monitor those registers as we simulate the program in our MP lab. Okay, we'll open up the MP lab simulation debugger. So this is, you'd, you could write your program and then put it into your chip, but chances are you'd have an error in there. So you're able to debug your program before you write it to your chip using this fancy MP lab simulation. So go under uh, debugger, select tools and go into MP lab sim. And uh, then this little menu will appear in your um, window. And then we'll be able, using that, we'll be able to step through our program with the various functions there. Okay, let's open up the stopwatch function within the MP Lab program. We'll go to the debugger and select stopwatch, and it'll look like this. And this is just to allow you to time how long the different steps of your program take to run. And right now, its uh, default setting is for a processor whose frequency is 20 megahertz. However, our um, our microcontroller is set at 4 megahertz, so we have to go into the debugger settings, debugger settings, 
and then uh, it'll open up and then select the processor frequency and make that four and then you'll see that that will update in your stopwatch when you do that okay so now we've set up our programming environment and in part three we can write our machine language code to simulate the traffic light okay well here's a summary of the the uh, microcontroller commands that were appropriate for our particular microcontroller and um, these these are the main ones that you might use to uh, facilitate that particular program. You, we're just trying to make the lights turn off and on in sequence and and uh, be on for a certain amount of time. Okay, but it turns out there's only four of all these commands that we really need. Uh, maybe you'll use more of them if you want to get fancy, but uh, you can get by with just four. The first one is uh, so this is clear flag, I believe, on port B is what that means. So, and then the six tells us which bit is to be cleared. So that bit is uh, over here. Let's see, that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's the twelfth pin, which is we're outputting uh, the bit six. And this particular command makes that pin go low, so that it'll go to a zero volts. Incidentally, um, we have two ports in this PIC uh, 16F628A, and there's this is port A, and that means that all these pins are ports, and they can be input or output ports, and they might be serial or parallel. There's all different kinds of things you can do with this. Um, and then here is the port B pins, and we have eight pins, so we've got eight bits that we can input or output, and it starts at zero instead of one. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the eighth bit right there. And we're just going to be using output. So this particular command makes the output low. This command is for port B, we're going to set the flag, and we just arbitrarily picked this uh, port, not port, but bit. We're going to make bit um, 4 high. So this particular command, the way we've set it up with a 4 there, will make bit 4 go up to 5 volts, which is a high. And we can put any number there, so you could make it bit 2 if you wanted to and put all your LEDs over there. Or have more ID LEDs or could be controlling some other thing. Um, okay. I guess that's all we've got to say about that. Um, the next two commands go together. This uh, MOVLW sets the constant that is going to be used in Buzz's delay routine. So it sets that constant at 50. Here's Buzz's delay routine that he wrote for us. And what it does is it just, he's got a bunch of loops that he sends this microcontroller and it's just counting. And it's counting, counting, counting to 225 and then it goes and does it again. It does it uh, many thousands of times. And that's why it is a delay because it's counting all that time. And when he put in 50, I guess it goes through that uh, loop 50 times. Okay, so then the more, the larger this number, the more times the your microcontroller is going to count and, and uh, delay itself. Okay, so that's, this line right here sets that constant. This line right here calls the delay subroutine that Buzz wrote and then uh, actually uh, runs the subroutine. And then when the subroutine finally gets over, it ends and returns to the place where it left your uh, loop. Uh, notice if you don't put a delay into your program, that like if you say you turned on one of your lights and then you turned it off immediately, it would be on and off for about one millionth of a second. So you wouldn't even see it flash on and off. Your brain is not that fast. So you have to use this delay subroutine to make uh, the lights stay on for however long we want them to stay on going. Okay, and I'll just mention that... Oh, okay, so now that's you're going to be putting your loop commands in here, and you might not even use the stuff that's already there. Um, but you put your program in here, and then you'll have to uh, erase that 
that line or otherwise it's not going to compile after you get your program and then once so all your program steps are going to go into that area and then at the end oh at the end it's got this step right here and that step uh, makes your microcontroller loop for eternity so it it just keeps going back once it executes all this stuff it's just going to keep going through this thing and doing its duty for the rest of time on earth unless we turn it off okay uh, next after we've uh, programmed our um, we've written all of our steps well now before we can debug that program we need to compile the program the way we do that is we go into project build all and then we should get a build succeeded message once we build it so that means it's being compiled into just uh, you know numbers okay now we can use this thing that we set up to step into so you click this icon right there and it steps into the program and then it'll start right here I don't know why it doesn't start up here there but it doesn't um, so that's the first step right there and then as you click this it will increment its way through all these lines and every time it goes through a different line of code it's going to show you what has changed in your microcontroller so that way you can monitor what's going on over here as you're stepping through your program and seeing if it's doing what it's supposed to do okay so we'll just these program steps are uh, preliminary steps that set everything up for us and get all of our registers to zero and just all set up so we can write whatever program we want into this area right here so this program is not complete we've left it uh, so it doesn't actually work you're gonna have to put in your own steps for your program to make your lights go all right um, so let's step through what is here and I'll show you how it's reflected over here so BC it turned off well it, the red LED was I guess in um, on bit six whatever pin that was um, so it turned off bit six but all these bits were already zero because that's what Buzz did in, in this part of the program. So they were already zero. So this just tells it to be tells the zero to stay zero, I guess. Okay. So then in this step, we've just gone now we're the arrow tells us we we will execute that on our next time we click that step forward. So, but right now we just it executed the BSF command and what it did was turn bit four on. So here's bit uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So bit 4 is now a 1. Over here it was a 0, see? So we just turned that bit on, and I guess that was the bit uh, that was controlling the green LED for this particular program. All right. Um, well, so next, the next... Uh, program step is going to be this setting that delay time thing which is okay but once we get into this um, this goes through 255 times you know it's counting uh, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of times you'd have to click it so if you were just using that uh, step forward command and going through this it would go through this whole thing for you but you would just be and you can watch and see what uh, Buzz's program does and step through it but I don't think you'll want to step through it 10 million times until it gets back to this point okay so what you do instead is you double click on delay and it puts a break point into your step forward thing so that you can then execute this part of the uh, program independently of everything else so put the breakpoint in zero your stopwatch uh, so that you can tell how long this delay routine takes so when we had it remember we had it set for 50 and it should be about uh, 10 seconds so first of all we'll zero our stopwatch and then we'll click Oh, we've stepped into the delay, so now it's all, if we step again, we'll be into it. See, it hasn't executed that yet, but if we step into it again, it will ex execute this, and then we'll be stuck forever into this thing, clicking 10 million times. Um, 
but we're not going to click step into we're going to click run so then it runs this whole uh, delay routine and and then it times how long it takes to run it so the stopwatch told me that it was 9.792172 seconds to run through this delay subroutine uh, with that constant set at 50. so if you want to have it less than 10 seconds you can like uh, divide by five that'd be two seconds so you could set uh, D equals 10 and then that would be about two seconds and you can just tweak it however you want all right uh -huh. oh if you ever get stuck like if you happen to click through into this thing and now you want to get out just click reset and it'll take you back to the beginning so you don't have to click it 10,000 times or turn the computer off or anything Step three nine. Oh, so once you've run this loop and then we know how long it takes, we click step out. Uh, step out is this icon right here to get back into the next line and uh, in your loop, in the loop in the loop that we wrote, and then we can execute the other one. So it might have been turn the red one on and then you have a delay of 10 seconds and then it comes back in here and it turns the red one off then turns the yellow one on or whatever you're going to do so you continue ex executing your additional lines of code until you've simulated your entire program and debugged it make sure everything is working okay and once we have the program working you're ready to move your program to your microcontroller and that's our final part of the show, transferring the program to the PIC. So uh, carefully pry your PIC using your uh, screwdriver from one end and the other end. Don't just use your fingers because you will bend the pins. Uh, also, be aware that try not to touch any one of these pins because if you have any static electricity build up on your fingers and you touch one of those pins it will fry the whole thing so they're very touchy unlike our op amps they're a different type of logic so they uh, uh, are more hardy but these things are very sensitive so try not to touch the pins and if you're moving it from one place to another you can put it in this these uh, conducting sponges just push it right down into that and then that will keep any static electricity from building up on any one of the pins and breaking our uh, microcontroller. Okay, so we pop our microcontroller into the programmer with pin one here. Here's this thing has to be up so that it'll allow for the insertion of our microcontroller. Then you press that little lever down and it's holding it in there and making good connection. Then we go into our uh, MB lab or whatever that program was called. I've forgotten it now. Let's go into programmer and uh, select pick start plus enable the programming of your microcontroller in that program thing and then we want to see if there's any program that's already in there because if it's if it is we won't be able to program it so we can uh, check your uh, communicate to your microcontroller and check to see if anything is in there and i see that oh somebody left this and it was not blank we want to um, leave them blank for our next uh, group. So then what we do, if it's not blank, we erase what's in there. And then so you go into Programmer and erase the flash drive, and then you'll get that message. Uh, then you click Program, so and then that will transfer your program into the microcontroller. And, um, and then you'll get an error message, but it's okay. It's just joking with you. It, even though you're getting this error message, it actually will write to the uh, chip. Step 3.8. Now <clears throat> we, we turn that lever up and we can pull our chip out. And then insert the chip back into the breadboard very carefully. Do not bend any of these pins and, or touch them. Step 3.9, just attach the power connection to the breadboard, and you should start seeing your uh, traffic light starting to operate with these three LEDs going on and off in sequence. And then you can observe and see how long they're on and so forth and feel a sense of satisfaction. Well, that's it. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.